here trying to help you. I'm here to give you what it took me 30, 30 years in ministry to get. Now, we are talking about the glorious appearing. Titus chapter 2 and verse 13. We already talked about looking for that blessed hope, but now we're talking about series, verse number 4, volume 2, the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. That's what they was waiting for. I gave you some thing this morning, and I hope you got that teaching this morning because you're able to see that he was not talking to us today. He was talking to Israel 2,000 years ago. All right, but let's, let's go to work. Uh, we're going to give you some things. We're going to move right over into God's Word. Uh, this morning we gave you three different things uh, showing you. Uh, let's go to uh, a scripture that we gave you to show you is Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Just one verse. Hosea 4, 6. My responsibility is to give you the knowledge of God's Word. Right after the book of Daniel, uh, you have Hosea, we want to go to chapter 4, and verse number 6, because that verse told us where Israel was. And we're going to look at another one today in Proverbs 5, 21 through 23 after this. But we're going to show you, this is where Israel was. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, they rejected God's knowledge. See, you can't get understanding of the Word if you reject the knowledge of the Word. When God gives you somebody who's going to take their time and, and go get all the scriptures you need to show you, to prove to you, and that's what instruction does. And then now you got to get the instruction and then ask God, Lord, reveal your word to me. Is this true or false? I mean, is this for us or was it for them? He'll show you. All right, look at Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for one reason, lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. They forgot God's knowledge. And he told you how it happened, as they were increased. See, as they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. We're going to show you one more. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 21. You and Hosea, you read out of the book of Psalms. Proverbs chapter number 5. And we just want to look at uh, verse 21. See, regardless of where you go in the Word, what happened to Israel, they rejected God's knowledge. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 21. Old Testament, this is how it was. The ways of man before the eyes of the Lord. He punished all his goings. That's why they were judged according to their works. All right, because God looked at their heart. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself. And here it is, verse 22, he shall die. He shall be holden with the cords of his sin. What does that mean? Next verse says, he shall die without instructions. See, my people destroy for lack of knowledge. He shall die without instructions. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. That's what happened to Israel. Israel did not want the word and that's why God could not give them knowledge and understanding. Okay, look at Jeremiah again, Jeremiah 3.15. I told you this morning when a woman came to this ministry, our good friend and sister, Minister Eva Brown, uh, this is the scripture she said God gave her. She's been with us now over 30 years. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse number 15. When we were in the basement, and that means she'd been with us probably 33, 34 years. All right? But this is the scripture God gave us. This is what she says. This is why I came to this ministry. Condemned building. Having church in the basement. But God brought her to be with us. Here's the scripture. And I will give you pastors, according to my own heart, which shall feed you, feed you, with knowledge and understanding. So you have to have a pastor to feed you the word, and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm not up jumping up and down and shouting. Listen, I'm not here for that. I'm not here for all of this hoopla, hoplod, whatever that is. I'm here to give you the word. 
All right, this is not popular. I'm not trying to look pretty and popular. I'm here to give you the word. And that's what it's all about. You get the knowledge of God's word and get the understanding from the Holy Spirit. That is your responsibility. Okay, now let's go back and look at this appearing because we, we talked about this morning. We gave you uh, Mark chapter 16 and we read that. We're not going back to Mark today. Uh, we're going to go to Acts chapter 9. Let's, let's go to Acts 9. Now we're going to show you the Apostle Paul. We showed you that the disciples already. We showed you uh, the, the, the two on the mayor's road. We showed you the 12 disciples. All of that. I, I'm going to even go to 1 Corinthians 15. Not the show you all of these people had seen the Lord. So he had appeared to all these people. Old Testament, he appeared to Abraham. All right, we gave you all of that this morning, state. All right, now let's look at Acts 9 and watch this. This is with the Apostle Paul because God appeared to Paul. Remember when he was on the road to Damascus? Let's start reading verse 17. Acts chapter 9, verse 17. Let's just go there. And Ananias went his way because Ananias uh, was the one that Paul was sent to. Ananias went his way and entered into the house, putting his hands on Paul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared to you in the way as thy cameth has sent me. Now, when the Lord appeared to Paul, he appeared, he appeared to him in his brightness, in his glory, and it blinded him. And the Bible says that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, Paul was blinded, God, but the Lord appeared to him. All right? All right. Now, let's go to Acts 26, 16. You're going to see this, this scripture repeat itself. Acts chapter 26 and verse number 16. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to start reading verse 12. Let's back up to verse 12. Let's just take some of this in. Acts 26, 12 says, Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commissioned from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light, there it is, a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, and them which journeyed with me. Now, that's an awesome thing. That's an awesome thing. Now, because we, we remember there was only 490 uh, years from the prophecy of Daniel, and we know that 490 years ended when Stephen stood up. Once Stephen stood up, uh, he was being stoned to death, and he looked up and he said, I, I beheld Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Standing on the right hand of God. And here we see him not long afterwards, which would have been chapter 9, they stoned Stephen in chapter number 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, we see him meeting Paul. All right, well, watch what he's going to say here. Watch what he's going to say to Paul. Paul says in verse number uh, 14, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew's tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared. There it is. I have appeared to thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of the things which thou hast seen and the things in the which I will appear to thee. See, God appeared to the apostle Paul. See, they were still waiting for him him to come but remember he been appearing all the way through the old testament even into the new covenant uh let's go to show you that first corinthians 15 5 to 8 first corinthians 15 and we're going to look at verse 5 through verse number 8 first corinthians chapter 15 and this is showing you that he was seen so it was so the appearing of the lord they were waiting for because I'm going to show you that appearing was going to fulfill the book of Daniel. I'm going to show you Daniel 7, 9 after a while. Matter of fact, we'll go there next. All right. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 5 says, He was seen of Cephas, that's Peter, then of the twelve of the disciples. After that, he was seen of about, watch this, above 
500 brothers at once. God want to make sure that people will understand that his son is risen. All right, he had 500. Those became witnesses, 500 at one time, of whom the greater part remained until this present 2,000 years ago, but some had fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me, also one born out of due time. So the apostle Paul says, there he also saw him. All right, now let, let's go to Titus 2. I'm sorry, Titus chapter 3, verse 4. We in Titus, let's go to Titus 3, and we're going to start with verse number 3. Titus 3 and, and verse 3. The Apostle Paul is giving his testimony to Titus. In Titus chapter number 3 and verse number 3, he says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. He's going to give his testimony. He said, We also were sometimes foolish. We were disobedient. We were deceived. See, Paul was deceived. Serving diver lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hating, hating and hateful, hating one another. But after the kindness, here it is, and the love of God our Savior toward men appeared. Here he called God's grace, the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards men appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by grace, we should be made heirs, watch this, according to the hope of eternal life. They will be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So let's go look at what they were hoping for. They were hoping for eternal life. Let's go to Titus chapter 1. Verse 1, 2, 3. Titus chapter 1. Verse 1, 2, 3. They were waiting for Christ's return so they could receive eternal life. All right, here we go. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith, remember that's what God gave them, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, here it is, in hope of eternal life. Which God that cannot lie promise, so we can see what God promised them. Which God which cannot lie promise before the world began. All right, so let, let's, let's look at that. God promised them eternal life. So, so, so uh, let's go. Let's go to 1 John, I'm sorry. Let's go to now 1 John. Just showing you that God promised him eternal life. In 1 John chapter 2, John is going to speak this same thing to the church of God. 1 John 2, we're going to look at verse number uh, 25. Just want to show you that they, he promised them eternal life. 1 John chapter 2, verse 25. And this is the promise that he promised us. See, God did not promise us eternal life. We got everything in Christ. And this is the promise that he had promised us. John is telling the church of God, even eternal life. See, he promised them eternal life. Now, when you, when you go over and begin to look at these guys, uh, they were promised eternal life. You see? So you'll hear, you'll hear, let's go to James. Let's show you one James 1.12. James chapter 1, and verse 12. We're going to come back to uh, 2 Timothy in just a moment. Uh, we're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, and we're going to go looking at uh, verse 7. But let's go to James 1 first. You write there in 1 John. Let's back up to James chapter 1. And we're going to show you in verse number 12, all these guys were waiting for eternal life. All right? James chapter 1. Can, can I back it up to verse 10, if I could? James chapter 1 and verse number 10. It says, but the rich, and that he made low, 
because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no soon risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof faileth. The grace of the fashion of it perishes. Also shall the rich man fade in his ways. Then he's going to move into verse 12. Blessed the man that endured temptation. For when he's tried, he shall receive, watch this, the crown of life. That's eternal life. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. The Lord has promised to them that love him. Amen. The Lord has already promised to them that love him. All right. Now, so let's look at that same thing in 2 Timothy 4, and we want to look at verse number 7 and 8. So God has promised to them that love him. See, all through the word of God, you, you'll see that. They were waiting for the coming of the Lord. Verse 7, we are reading 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought a good fight, Timothy says. Paul says to Timothy. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. But watch what he says waiting for him 2,000 years ago now. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Now this crown of righteousness was the same thing as, as eternal life. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me, he says. When are you going to give it to you, Paul? At that day, not to me only, but all them that love his appearing. All them that love his appearing. They was waiting for him to return. See, so if you, if you say, okay, the Lord had not come yet, then that means that Paul lied because Paul was waiting for him to to give him the crown of righteousness. Read that one more time. Verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but all them that love his appearing. They were waiting for him to come. All right, let me, let me show you a, a good one here. This is one of these that is hard to dispute. Let's go to the book of Acts again. Let's go back to Acts and we're going to go to Acts 26. I like to read this one because it's like, it's just like, it's just like, shuts you up. You know, there's some things you read, they just like, okay, shut up. Acts 26, verse 6 and 7. See, if, if, you, just, if you just take God's word, just sit down and enjoy it. See, Acts 26, 6 and 7. Watch what Paul says. Now, he's in court. He said, I now stand and I'm judged. Why are you judged, Paul? For the hope of the promise. We're waiting on the screen. We're waiting on the screen. Acts chapter 26 and verse 6 and 7. There it is. He says, and now I stand and I'm judged for the hope of the promise. Here it is. Made of God unto our fathers. That's what I'm saying. He didn't make the promise to us. He made it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He made it unto which promise, watch this, our 12 tribes. Once again, information, there's no 12 tribes today. As a matter of fact, you don't have no tribes. They was taken out in Revelation chapter 7. Unto which promise our 12 tribes instantly, remember the book of Acts chapter 26, Say so it was instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope, King Agrippa, I'm accused of the Jews. Now, the 12 tribes of Israel were taken out. Look at Revelation chapter 7. Look at Revelation chapter 7. The 12 tribes of Israel were taken out in Revelation chapter number 7. And the only one was taken out it was whose name was written in the book of life. We go to Daniel 12 after this, verse 1. It's all there. The 12 tribes, only one was taken out that was in the book of life, which was 144,000. 
So then we are show you that in Daniel 12, verse 1, after this. Revelation 7 and verse 1, that's where we're at. Here we go. And after these things, uh, John says, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, talking about Israel, holding the four winds of the earth, talking about Israel, that the wind should not blow on the earth, talking about Israel, nor on the sea, nor in any tree, talking about Israel. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth, talking about Israel, and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, talking about Israel, and the sea, nor the trees, talking about Israel, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000, all of the tribes of the children of Israel. Why would he say 144,000? 12 tribes. So if you read the rest of that, he's going to name the tribes. And I heard the number of them. Judah, 12 tribes. Israel, I mean Asia, 12 tribes. Simeon, 12 tribes. So you don't have this anymore. Zebulun, 12 tribes. Joseph, 12 tribes. Benjamin, 12 tribes. See, if, if you go there and you read all the 12 sons, all of them was 12 tribes. Remember, that's not there anymore. So if you don't believe Christ has come, what happened to the 12 tribes of Israel? Well, the Bible told you, Revelation chapter 7, they was taken out. All right, and the rest went through tribulation because they didn't want God. Let's go to Daniel chapter 12. Let's see what happened on that, on that day, Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. What an awesome God we serve. All this is right here in your Bible. You just got to read it. Daniel chapter 12. And let's start reading what, verse 1. Now the angel is telling Daniel the time of the end. Here it is. And at that time, Daniel, shall Michael stand up, the great prince, the angel, that stood for the children of thy people Israel. There shall be a time of trouble called Jacob's trouble, such as never since there was a nation. Even at that same time, Daniel, at that time, Daniel, thy, thy people shall be delivered. I showed you in Revelation chapter 7 how they were delivered. I'm going to take you back to Romans 11, 26, show it to you again. Thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be written in the book. See, everybody's in the book will be delivered, 144,000, 144,000, 12 tribes. And then verse 2 says, and many of them that, this is the fulfillment of 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, and many of them that slept in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to everlasting contempt. So that's the fulfillment of it when you got down to the book of Revelation when Jesus came. He raised the dead. Why are you there in Daniel? I need to show you one more. I'm going to take it to Romans 11, 26. Write that down. But let's look at Daniel chapter number 7 because I told you I was going to show you something. Let's look at Daniel 7. Then we'll go to Romans. Remember Romans 11, 26. Let me mark that in my Bible also. Romans chapter 11 and verse 26. Just one verse there. All right, but let's read this in Daniel chapter number 7 and verse 9. See, what you are seeing happen when, when Jesus Christ come uh, that Titus was talking about was a fulfillment of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. Daniel said, I beheld till the throne were cast down. Because when, remember when Jesus is coming, he's coming to destroy all these other kingdoms. The Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow, hairs of his head like pure wool, his stone was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him. Ten thousand time ten thousand stood before him, and the judgment was set, and the books was open. So that's what they waiting for when the Lord returned that we say, when people say they believe Jesus is coming, 
this is what you say you believe in is going to happen. You're saying the Lord's going to have to come and judge the earth, which was Israel, 144,000. They're not even here. You believe in the wrong thing. All right. And then it says, and the book was open. Judgment was set and the book was open. And I beheld then because the voice of the great words of the horn spake. And I beheld even till the beast was slain. He's talking about the king of that day who was, we call the son of perdition or the man of sin. I beheld even till the beast was taken, his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. And concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night vision, here he is, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Now this is what people said they're waiting to happen. He came with the clouds of heaven, came to the Ancient of Days, they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion. So if you're saying that this is going to happen, then you say they have not given Jesus dominion and glory and the kingdom, that all people, nation, language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting kingdom, which shall not pass away. His kingdom, which shall not be destroyed. Now, when Jesus taught this, he told them he's going to go and, and receive a kingdom. All right, let's go, let's go see. Did he receive it? Let's go back to Luke chapter number uh, 19, verse 11. Luke, we'll go to Romans after a while. Luke 19, 11. I gave you this this morning that Jesus taught that, that same thing that he was going to leave and get a kingdom and he was going to come back. But he was coming back to Israel. Luke uh, chapter 19, verse 11. It's all here. Everything is right here. All you got to do is look at it. Luke 19, 11. As they heard these things, Jesus added and spake a parable. Behold, he was nigh to Jerusalem because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately come. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman. Now, he's going to tell them about the kingdom. Now, he is, he is this nobleman. A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom. He's telling them what he's doing. He said, I'm going to go into a far country. I'm going to receive for myself a kingdom and to return. And I'm coming back. And he called his ten servants. Now, those ten servants are ten tribes of Israel. He delivered them 10 pounds, which is faith, F-A-I-T-H, and said to them, occupy till I come. He gave them all faith. How do I know it? I got the Bible. He gave them all faith, occupy till I come. But his citizen hated him, sent messengers after him saying, we would not have this man reign over us. That's what Israel says. It came to pass that he, when he was returned, when he was returned, having received the kingdom. That's why I just showed you in Daniel chapter 7. He received the kingdom. He received honor and glory, power and the kingdom. So he came back having received the kingdom. Then he commanded those servants to be called to him of whom he had given money, faith, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Now, if you read that down, he went to the first, the second, the th uh, uh, third. Then in verse 26, he said, I say, let's go down to verse 26. He said, I say to you that unto every one which has, shall be given, every one which has not even that which he has shall be taken away. So you want to find out how much you receive by trading, using your faith. But those my enemies, here, here we go. But those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither, slay them before me. Can't be talking about you. Jesus Christ never came here to reign over us. We the body of Christ. See, he was fulfilling the scripture as it was in the book of David. If you'll go read David's ministry, 
you will see exactly what I just got through teaching. Ten tribes did not want David to reign over them. Only two tribes did. And you will look for this word, to thy tents, O Israel, O Jacob, O Israel. To thy tent. They left David. They did not want David to reign over them. That's what you are seeing, fulfilled in Christ. All right? Now, that was Luke. Now, let's go back to Romans. I want to show you this verse, Romans chapter 11 and verse 26. And so all Israel, remember, all those that are written in the book. Remember I told you that? All Israel shall be saved. Tier 144,000, that's what he's talking about. Because in Malachi, the Lord said when he make up his jewels. We wait on Romans eleven twenty six. There it is. It says, and so all Israel shall be saved. That word saved means delivered. Remember, they wait on that salvation. The word salvation means deliverance. All right? And all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion. Zion. There shall come out of Zion. We'll go to the book of Revelation after this. Not Revelation, I'm sorry, Hebrews. And we're going to go to Revelation, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 12, because he's telling you where Jesus is. He shall come out of Zion. Revelation, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 12, verse uh, 20, uh, 22. We'll go there next. Hebrews 12, 22. We'll go there next. Watch this. Romans, Romans 11, 25, I mean 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, delivered. For it's written, there shall come out of Zion. Now remember, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer. So we know where Jesus went to when he rose from the dead. When Jesus rose from the dead, he went into the kingdom. When Jesus rose from the dead, he went into the kingdom. And I'm going to show you all what makes up the kingdom when I get to Hebrew chapter 12, just a moment. And so all Israel shall be saved at his written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant, he says, unto them when I shall take away their sins. Their sins. He's going to remove the blindness from their eyes. That's what happened. But let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, and let's show you where Jesus went to when he rose from the dead. Oh, this stuff is so good, boy. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, where did Jesus go? He went to Zion. Where's Zion? Jerusalem. But not the Jerusalem in the earth, Jerusalem which is above. But you are a chosen generation, Hebrews 12, 22. You are a chosen generation. I'm sorry, Hebrew 12, 22. But you are come to Mount Zion. See right there? Hebrew 12, 22. You are come to Mount Zion. Well, that's where Jesus is. Unto the city of the living God. That's where Jesus is. The heavenly Jerusalem. See, not the earthly, heavenly. You are come to innumerable company of angels. You are come to the general assembly. The church, that's what the church is. The church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, see? You have come to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. You have come to Jesus, see, that's what Jesus is. The mediator of the New Testament. You have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better thing than that of Abel. So he told you, you are, you are come, not come. When you get saved, that's where you come. You're part of this now. Oh, hallelujah. When you get saved, you become a part of this thing. So you want to know where all of the believers go to? They go to Zion. Jerusalem. The city of the living God. Praise God for his goodness. All right. Now, we're talking about his appearance. Let's go to Hebrews 9, 23. We got a little time to, to, to give you some information here. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 23 through 28. 
That's where we at. Hebrew 9, 23 to verse 28. You want to write this down because I want to take it to these, if you write these down. After we leave here, we're going to go to Colossians 3, 1 through 4. I'm going to write these down for me. Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 4. And then we're going to look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, 2, and 3. Let's do Hebrew first. Hebrew 9, 23. And we're going to read this down to verse 28. Oh, this word is so good. Hebrew chapter 9 and verse 23. And it was necessary that the pattern of these in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly thing themselves was better sacrificed than these. For Christ, remember I told you what Christ went to. Here we go again. Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. Which are a figure of the truth. But in the heaven itself, that's Hebrew 12, 22, in the Zion. In the heaven itself. Now, to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer often as the high priest into the holy place every year without blood, I'm sorry, with blood of others. For then must he have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, 2,000 years ago, end of the age, hath passed it, he appeared to put away sin 2,000 years ago. Why did Jesus Christ appear the first time? To put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. 2,000 years ago. Now watch the continuation. And verse 20 7 says, And as it is pointed unto me and wants to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered, once offered to bear the sins of many unto them that look for him. Shall he appear the second time without sin on the salvation. Now, who did he write that to? He wrote it to the Hebrews. Wonder why he wrote it to the Hebrews? Because he promised the Hebrews. The Hebrews were waiting for Christ. You write there in Hebrew, in Hebrew chapter 9, watch what it says. When you read the book of Hebrew, look at chapter 10. Let's go to Hebrew chapter number 10. And verse 23. Hebrew 10, 23. Watch what Paul is going to say to the same Hebrews. See, if you read the book, who is he talking to? Wasn't talking to you. you. You're already in Christ. You already got eternal life in Christ. You are the body of Christ. Hebrew 10, 23, here we go. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Our faith, well, that's what he gave them. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. That's what he gave them. See, what I gave you this morning, Luke 18 and 8, when I come, when I find faith on earth, because that's what he gave them. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and the good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as so much the more as you see the day approaching. Can't be 2,000 years later. Remember, Hebrew was written in AD 64. As you see the day approaching. Then he said, but if we sin willfully, Sin, willfully. He's talking to Hebrews. 
If we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge, that's what he was giving them. If you sin willfully after you receive the knowledge of the truth, how can they do that? Reject the knowledge. He said, there remain no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment, because that's what's going to happen when Jesus came. Fiery ignorant nation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much sore punishment, how much sore punishment suppose you shall ye be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God, has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and has done spite to the spirit of grace. He said, if you do this, what you think going to happen to you? We know that, we know him that has said, vengeance belong to me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. So he says to them, you call to remember the former days in which after you was illuminated, after you received the word, you endured a great fight of afflictions, partly while you were made a gazing stock, both for reproaches and afflictions, and partly while you were companions of them that were so used. You had, you had com compassion on me and my bonds. You took joyfully spoiling of, of, of your goods, knowing in yourself that you have in heaven you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance of my Jesus. So he says to them, cast not therefore away your confidence, your faith. Cast not away therefore your faith, which has great recompense of reward. Jesus said, Luke 18 and 8, when I come, when I find faith on the earth, because to get their salvation, they had to have kept the faith. For you have need of patience, he says. After you have done the will of God, what was the will of God? Believe Jesus Christ, believe Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. After you have done the will of God, they asked Jesus, how can we work the works of God? Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. You have need of patience. After you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. After you believe in Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, you will receive the Holy Spirit. For yet a little while, he that shall come will come. 2,000 years ago. Yet a little while, 2,000 years ago. He that shall come will come. 2,000 years ago. And will not tarry. Now, 2,000 years ago, A.D. 64, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back to perdition, but of them that believe, how long? To the saving of the soul. That's why the next chapter is about faith. The first thing it says in Hebrew 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. They were hoping for Christ to return. And God gave them faith so they will get their salvation. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. They were given one thing and that was faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Now watch, watch what Peter says. Watch what Peter said. 1 Peter 5, 4. You in Hebrew? Let's go to 1 Peter 5, 4. Oh, this word is so good, brother. 1 Peter chapter 5. Of, uh, of verse, and verse 4. Just one verse. 1 Peter 5, 4. Watch what he says. When the chief shepherd shall appear. We are talking about the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. When the chief shepherd shall appear, Peter was waiting for him to appear, to return. He says, when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory. 
That's the same thing as a crown of life that faded not away. Why would he say faded not away? Because Moses, the glory that Moses had on his face faded away. But the spirit that they're going to receive will not fade away. So I showed you that in James chapter 1 and verse 12. I showed you in, in 2 Timothy 4, 8. So, so we'll continue to show you over and over. What am I doing? I'm giving you information. Let's go to 1 John 2, 28. You and Peter go forward. 1 John chapter number 2 and verse number 28. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 28. And now, little children, watch what it says. Why, Paul, why do these people keep telling the Jews? I showed you in Hebrews, showed you in James, in Peter, because they all minister to Hebrews. 1 John 2, 20. And now, little children, abide in him. When he shall appear, Look what, John, look what John is telling the church of God. When he shall appear, we. Listen, when he shall appear, we. We may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. We. Look at 1 John chapter 3 and verse 20. We. First John chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. They were waiting for the Lord to come 2,000 years ago. Do you think he came yet? Sure he did. First John chapter 3, verse 20. If our hearts condemn us, John says, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. This, is not, this was not given to you. It was given to the church of God. And whatsoever we ask, this was given to them. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and we do those things which are pleasing in his sight. This is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the, his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. He did not give you commandment. Not that one. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. Hereby we know that we abide in us because of the spirit which he has given us. So John is telling them for them to wait. The Lord is coming. Don't, you know, be, he's going to appear. Look at 1 first, first Timothy 6, 11. 1 Timothy Chapter 6. All this stuff is so good, man. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 11. We're going to read down to verse 14. 1 Timothy 6, 11. Watch, watch what he says. 1 Timothy 6, 11. But thou, O man of God, this is what Paul is telling Timothy, flee these things, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patient, meekness, Fight the good fight of faith. Remember, they were given faith. Lay hold on eternal life. That's what he told Timothy. Fight the good fight of faith. Hold on to eternal life. Where until thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Hold on to your confession of faith. I give you charge, he said, in the, in the sight of God who quicken us all things before Jesus Christ, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable. How long? Unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Timothy, keep your faith. How long? Keep this commandment. How long? Unto the appearing of of our Lord Jesus Christ. You think he's talking to us? Let's show you another. Man, if you just, just read the word. Philippians chapter 1, 3 through 6. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 through 6. 
If you'll get the knowledge, God will give you understanding. I'm here to give you the knowledge of God's word. Philippians chapter 3. After this, we're going to go to Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 3, 8 through 11. I think we got time. 1 Timothy, we just gave you 6, 11 through 14. Now we're going to give you Philippians 1, 3 through 6. Philippians 1, 3 through 6. I thank my God upon every member of you. Always in my prayer of mind for you, making, mention, uh, making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident in this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We'll perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Until the day. They were waiting for the Lord to return. All right, let's look at 1 Thessalonians 3, 8. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse number 8. All this word is so good, brother. 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 8. Watch what it says. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. For what things can we render to God again for you for all the joy wherewith we joy in your, for your sakes before our God. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking, watch this, in your faith, because that's what he gave them. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct, direct our way to you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one towards another and towards all men, even as we do towards you. To the end, he may establish your heart unblameably in holiness before God, even our Father, watch this, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, watch this, with all his saints. Well, when did the saints get there? Remember, he raised them from the dead in Romans chapter 7. Remember, they were killed during the persecution. They were beheaded. Remember, the saints asked him, how long? You read the book of Revelation. They're around the throne saying, how long, Lord? Holy and true, that does not revenge our blood. And he told them, to your fellow servant be killed as you were, has been fulfilled. It's not, about, it's not about you. It was those people in the day of Paul, Peter, James, and John. Let's, let's do one more. In the Jude chapter 1, we got enough time to do the book of Jude chapter 1. Yeah, the book of Revelation, they asked him, how long? <laughs> how long before you're going to avenge our blood? First John. Are you there? No, we're in Jude, aren't we? Uh, the last book before we get to the book of Revelation. Verse 14. Jude, verse 14. Here we go. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh. Remember, Enoch prophesied this. Your salvation is not under prophecy. Israel's salvation was under prophecy. Your salvation is under the revealed word. This is prophecy being fulfilled. We are not waiting for God to fulfill prophecy. Prophecy has been fulfilled. Prophecy has been fulfilled. There was no more prophecy after Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was the last prophet. Jesus Christ came and fulfilled all the prophecy. Here, Enoch also the seven from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. Why did he do that, Pastor? To execute judgment. So if you're waiting on the Lord to come, that's what he's coming to do, execute judgment upon all and convince all that are ungodly among 
them of their ungodly deeds. You're not, you're not saved by your works. Which they have ungodly committed. Watch this. And their harsh speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. You weren't even there then. You weren't even there then. Jesus told them, whatever they say against him shall be forgiven them. But whatever they said against the Holy Ghost shall never be forgiven. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Praise God for his goodness. First Corinthians chapter 15 is our final verse. This is what we read here because we believe your salvation is dependent on the cross. Your salvation is dependent on the cross. First Corinthians chapter 15, your salvation is dependent on the cross. Verse 1, Moreover, brothers, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. I deliver you first of all that which I also receive. Here's your salvation. How Christ died for our sin. Well, how did he die? He was crucified. They nailed the nails in his hands and his feet. He was crucified. He was offered up as a sheep before the slaughter. He was crucified. Paul said, I deliver you first of all how Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. He was seen also of above 500 brothers at once of whom the greater part remain until this present but shall not fall in sleep. After that he was seen of James, then of the twelve, and last of all he was seen of me, Paul, as one born out of due time. Put your faith in Christ's death and resurrection. You cannot go wrong. My time is up. I thank you for yours. The door of faith is open unto you.